hopefully it'll uh, work out that way. But, you know, I've never given up on that. Everybody that knows me knows I love doing my original songs. I, I uh, don't really do uh, cover tunes. And um, I'm hoping that uh, what I've got to offer Las Vegas and, and the world is uh, music that they'll enjoy and um, that uh, hopefully we'll, uh, you'll hear on the radio someday soon, if not locally at one of the larger clubs. Very cool. Well, uh, let's get you to do a song, man. All right. So we, my band uh, met on Monday, and we talked about our song selection, and we're, we're putting a 35-minute opening act show together right now of uh, a lot of stuff we've been rehearsing, a lot of the stuff that uh, we had in our uh, other shows that we formulated uh, We've got a lot of good material. It was funny to watch my guys fight over what songs they wanted to put in this because they're like, well, wait a minute. We want that song in there. We want that song. <laughs> so it was kind of, as a songwriter, it's very um, heartening and touching to, to see people who really like my songs that well that were willing to speak out and say, well, what about this one? And and uh, you'll hear those other songs in, in the other shows, but we had to include some of uh, some of our best stuff. So we're, we're going to open our act with a song called American. And uh, my, my grandfather, Matt Bedadich, came here in 1926 from uh, the former Yugoslavia. And um, he, he came on a work visa, and it's my understanding that he never really became a, a citizen. But um, he's the reason I'm here today. And um, he loved America. You know, regardless of how you got here, if you love America, then we love you back. Because it's a great place. It's the greatest country on the planet. And um, I'm proud to be an American. And so this song is just about... Uh, being proud to be an American. Day and night from far and near Tens of thousands every year Doing anything to get over here To be American To be American well, they see it on TV and one To have what in their country they don't To live in the land of the free they long To be American To be American Well, they act just like my grandpa did He came here in 26 from a Another country far away To have the chance to stand up and say I'm an American I'm an American I'm an American Yeah, I'm an American They cross the ocean in boats so small Through a barren desert they walk and crawl for that chance, they'll risk it all to be American, to be American. And on an ordinary American street, you'll find every kind of human being. Yeah, they're black and white and every color in between. American, they're all American. It's been going on for hundreds of years since Christopher Columbus was here from another country far away. So we have the chance to stand up and say, I'm an American, I'm an American, yeah, I'm an American, I'm an American, yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. Very cool. I'm proud to be an American. That's yeah, man. called American. So uh, we have Matt Dorman here, and uh, we have hours to fill, but he's, uh, you know, he's got to eventually leave the fun. <laughs> he's got to go work on houses, which you do a nice job. I love it. I like a lot of the pictures you post. Yeah, I have a I like work when it's done. I'm a, I own a licensed, bonded, and insured carpentry entity called uh, MG Services, the Matt Dorman Companies. Uh, I'm a 23-year union finished carpenter, and I uh, helped build a lot of Las Vegas. Um, so uh, 
took that knowledge and experience into my companies and we do a lot of remodels, residential and commercial. You were talking about the Nellis Air Force Base Hospital. That was actually the first job I did as a new company owner. For two years, we, we remodeled the Nellis Air Force Base Hospital. Very cool. <clears throat> Very cool. I love all being there and watching that F-35s fly over, you know, they're, yeah. as they're landing, just awe-inspiring. Yeah. Awe-inspiring. The sound is amazing. Yes. <laughs> It'll definitely get you up in the morning for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So uh, that's cool. Let's uh, let's do another one. You got a fun one? Yes, I do. So this song, as I was telling you, uh, there ain't no gambling. God is uh, just my song to uh, basically tell people and myself just to keep things in perspective. And uh, this is a song that's in my show, um, and uh, hopefully you'll you'll enjoy the song. Well, there went my last 20 bucks. Man, I'm so bummed out. How am I going to tell my wife we're going to lose our house? Well, I pray and pray for one jackpot to make it all all right. Now I know there ain't no gambling God, and I finally see the light. No, there ain't no gambling God, and I'm willing to bet. No, there ain't no gambling God, cause he ain't saved me yet. Well, I'm praying for a million bucks, but I ain't got a dime. Cause there ain't no gambling God, the devil holds a line. Well, every time I roll those dice, I look up to the friendly skies and utter those same words in vain, Lord, let this one be mine. The players to my left and right keep getting all my chips. Well, I should know before those words even leave my lips that there ain't no gambling God I'm willing to bet. No, there ain't no gambling God cause he ain't saved me yet. Oh, I'm praying for a thousand bucks but I ain't got a dime. Cause there ain't no gambling God the devil holds a line. Seven come eleven, come on God, give me a break. I go to church, I'll change my ways if you just help me win today. Huh. But there ain't no gambling God, I'm willing to bet. No, there ain't no gambling God, cause he ain't saved me yet. Well, I'm praying for a hundred bucks, but I ain't got a dime. No, there ain't no gambling God, the devil holds a line. No, there ain't no gambling God, the devil holds a line. Nice. <laughs> Ain't no gambling god. Yeah, I can see how that would in uh I, I can see that being the uh, scene to Vegas. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny because I I uh I didn't really want to put it on my sets because I didn't want to in, uh, insult any of the casinos we might play at. But really it's not an anti gambling song. It's just a be responsible in any responsible casino that they yeah, all have those little yeah little, but, little how to get help if you've got a problem. Right, but that's <laughs> but you know res in, Teaching and preaching responsible gambling to people isn't just placards on a on an ATM machine. Right. It's reaching out commercials and stuff like that and letting people know. Um, and uh, so I believe that a responsible casino would play this song. They would allow me to play this song. There's my point. At first, I didn't because I thought, well, they would think, oh, there ain't no gambling god. We don't want you there because it's. But it's a really responsible casino would also see somebody struggling, losing their money, and going, you know what? You should probably take a break. Yeah, take a break. You know, they and, look uh, at the walk away. The cards aren't working for you right now. Right here, let me buy you breakfast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and and come back. You know, right, right. And and honestly, it's it's not just a phrase. Responsible gambling. It's not. It's no, not. It, just yeah, a it's phrase. a thing. Yeah. 
Sure. People come to, and I'll, I'll tell you a story. There was a young man who, uh, and I don't know how true this story is, but I've heard it from a few different people and from my hometown. And he moved out to California, was in the military. Well, he took all of his the money from him and his high school sweetheart and went to Vegas. I think it was around 10000 He He lost it all, and then he took his life. And I think these are the people who think they come to Vegas and that all their problems are going to be solved with money. And then they place a dollar value on their lives by losing that money. And it's just that's the part that, I think the worst case scenario like that that I would hope that you know someone would think about hey you know maybe he's right maybe maybe I need to get my gods in order you know something like that and if I could save one person in in that sense not to keep it from gambling but to keep it from them becoming destructive to the point where you know we all know what could happen that that would be a blessing to me and I would consider my mission accomplished there you go yeah awesome good stuff so we're looking forward to our shows. Um, I really didn't want to be a corner bar band. I really wanted to uh, to be a, something different where we go in and do especially shows, something where we can rock out nine or you know, even for a headline act, we'll be, we'll be 25 songs, whatever. I've got over 400 songs. I've got plenty of material for these shows. I just have to convince everyone that my songs are, are as good or better than what you hear on the radio. And it's not just about the words. It's about the, the stuff my band's putting together. We have Chuck Foley, who uh, r runs the um, recording studio at UNLV. I think he, I believe he's the music director or something. I'm gonna, my producer's gonna kill me for not remembering this, but he's written all the charts for our show. He's he's a wonderful, phenomenal um, driving force as a music director. He he wants to produce these songs. We're we're auditioning a f female singer right now to to bring a new dimension to our band. We have a, a couple keyboard players we're working with to try to find the dimension we want because when we when we bring our first show out there, there's a lot on the line. They're going to judge us by that first show, and we're we're in the process right now of making that so cool that you'll just want to like my T-shirts that say you want to get you some dormant, got to get you some dormant. We want to be that catchy. Yeah. Or I've just wasted thousands on my t-shirts. <laughs> now, I got the t-shirts when uh, we had some extra cash, and I thought, well, I might as well get them now. So I wanted to present you with the t-shirt. Uh, the, the, the ladies' version on the back says, Granny's Got a Tramp Stamp, which is um, uh, a song right now that's being pitched to a very large artist. And uh, Well, Chaotic Kim will love that. Yes, Chaotic Kim will love that. And then <laughs> the, other, the male shirts say, i got to get you some Dorman. So we're hoping that we live up to that model. Got to get you some dormant by providing some really wonderful shows, and and um, I'm hoping that the because message of my she songs. is a, she is a new granny. Oh, she's a new granny. Yeah, well, she should have been here to to, to dance, and she, I would have done uh, granny's got a she, dance. She did 13 and a half hours. She went home. Oh, yeah, she's not in the dancing mood. <laughs> when I when I signed on at 5 a.m., she's like, I'm out. I'm <laughs> out of here. Oh God, she'll, she'll be back later today on the night shift. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, she'll, she'll love it, for sure. Well, I really appreciate your time spent with me today. And, uh, to I thank you for uh, I thank you for coming. And, again, I thank you for uh, uh, having me be Santa. That was, <laughs> that was awesome. Man. Save that suit, because this year we'll do it again. Oh, I got it. I got it. That's the one suit you got to take care of. It comes with great responsibility, like the Spider-Man suit. Yes, yes, it does. I don't know what suit I wear when I get there, but I, I hope that it's one that has humility and, and respect for the women and children. That I don't I don't often brag, but I look pretty damn good in that sense. You did you look great. I was going to give you a hug, but I was afraid I might feel something I didn't need to be feeling. At that time. <laughs> yeah, that's not a peppermint stick, Santa. No, oh, what's that tingly feeling? I do love Santa. No, yeah, yeah, love it, no Santa. it was cool. I, I, I really did. It was, and we look forward to having next next year with them. This year now. Next yeah, year. this year. Yeah. This, today is the tomorrow you were worried about yesterday. Yeah. Man. Tomorrow, uh, always tomorrow. Uh, no, never tomorrow, always today. Always today, yeah. Because tomorrow yeah. never comes. Right. Well, you know, and, and part when of, you wake up, it's today. Part of the reason my story is um, might some might feel it compelling is because as a young uh, um, abused child I ended up uh, with a very tumultuous uh, uh, teens and early 20s and when in uh, when I was 24 I, I attempted suicide I tried very hard to kill myself and and I lived through it and I'm not sure how but I lived through it and and I believe that God saved me for a reason and I think that the message of my songs and everything um, everything in my songs has that little 
life's lesson, there's always a story behind a song, no matter how happy it is. So um, that's one of the reasons that uh, I really enjoy performing my songs out there to hopefully spread some of these messages that, you know, things will be okay. Don't gamble all your money away. Don't try to, you know, do destructive things. I, I'm not trying to be any kind of a saint because I'm definitely not. Right. But I, I just hope that I have some sort of a positive influence on my audiences and that they grow to like the songs and, and maybe they influence them in a way that will make things a little bit better for them somehow. Well, you, you talked about it. I think you should do it. Granny's got a tramp stamp. Let's do it. Now, the first line in the song says, I'm surrounded by cuties, and you're the only one in the room, so... That's right, baby. You got it. Right? <laughs> I just want to make sure you know it's about you. <laughs> With Crazy J, I'm surrounded by cuties. Green, blue, brown, I drop dead beauties. Tight jean, dance queen, tattooed bodies. Ink from head to toe, little hotties. Man, I wonder what they'll look like when they're old and gray and much later in life. And Granny's got a tramp stamp, a couple dozen tattoos. Yeah, Granny's got a tongue stud, and she's thinking it's real cool. Solid golden nose, ring, belly button, bling, bling, Granny's got a tramp stamp. A tramp stamp, yeah! Well, at the age of 18, she got her first one. Spring break, college bait, totally drunk. This here, that there, till it was hard to see where one ends and the other one starts. Now she's a sexy septuagenarian, and still damn proud of the ink she's wearing. Granny's got a tramp stamp and a cup of dust and tattoos. Yeah, Granny's got a tongue stud, and she's thinking it's real cool. Solid golden nose, ring, belly button, bling, bling. Granny's got a tramp stamp, a tramp stamp, yeah. Hey, sweet lady, show off your stuff, but don't get mad if Granny shows you why. She's gonna show you what. Yeah, oh, Granny, she's gonna show you why. Yeah, cause Granny's got a tramp stamp, a couple dozen tattoos. Yeah, Granny's got a tongue stud, and she's thinking it's so damn cool. Solid gold nose, ring, belly button, bling, bling. Granny's got a tramp stamp, a tramp stamp, yeah. Go, Granny, go. A tramp stamp, yeah! Go, Granny, go! Yeah, there it is. Granny's got a